All right, we're we're winding down. We're we're in uh, the final chapter, ready for the final chapter, chapter eighteen, survival. Which I thought, where is he going with this? Mm-hmm. He's already talked about success. <laughs> right. Right. Back well, to the survival stuff. Right. But um, he tells the story of his uh, struggle with stage four colon cancer as a as a thirty something year old man, and uh, what he how that process made him think about the struggle against racism and how his hopelessness in the face of his stage four cancer uh, analogizes to the hopelessness he's often felt about overcoming the disease of racism. And he had this moment of epiphany where he realized that he couldn't beat his cancer unless he believed he might be able to beat it. And then he analogized that to if I don't believe we can beat racism, maybe we we won't. It'll become a self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy. Um, and, and then he talked about how, uh, w- when he said, uh, when, when he compared racism to cancer and he says, but we've caught it early. That really got my attention. And then he said, because it, racism can be traced back to, it's, it, it really blossomed 600 years ago. And he says, that's just a small part of human history. That he, I know he said that early in the book, but that really got, that, that got through this time. It's like, wow. This, uh, so for most of human history, racism, as we know, wasn't a disease. Mm-hmm. You know, people hating people, but it wasn't race. It wasn't so race-based. And so he says, okay, so racism is a disease and we've caught it early, uh, but it is stage four. Mm-hmm. You know, it's serious. Mm-hmm. Um and so he ends the book by challenging us, do we believe we can overcome racism? And you, you just talked a little bit on the prior video, and I've heard you talk about um, how hard it is to believe that we can really make progress and overcome this. So as we come to the end of the book, I really want to ask you and hear your thoughts. Robert, do you believe do you believe we can over we can um, you know, overcome the cancer of racism in our culture? Well, I, let me just first say that um, I have been a part of this school of thought. Um, I am all for peaceful protest, but there have been things that have happened over the last few months where my internal attitude has been burn it down. And I don't know that we necessarily have to take an innocent person who built up a business by themselves and and say burn their business down. That's always extreme to me. But when they set police stations on fire and when they go after federal buildings, there's a part of me that has always said, how else do we get people's attention if we have tried to peacefully protest in social injustice and racism and those changes don't happen. And then we go to burning down buildings and all of a sudden it's the front page of the news. And so what is the proper response? But I will say that earlier in the book, uh, Dr. Kendi talks about the only way that we can undo discrimination is to have just as uh, energetic policies towards anti-discrimination is that we kind of have to turn it on its head. And what I have seen lately is that people who are racist are losing their jobs. They're being called out on social media. There's almost to a point when we talk about the um, Proud Boys that's in the news now, it's almost a situation where, at least on the surface, People who are racist are being called out on the carpet. And more people in society are turning around and saying, you can't be like that. Those types of things give me hope. And I will say that in the beginning of this process, when we all agreed that we would do this book, I did not have hope that there could really be change. But when we talk about an individual's responsibility to change the way that we look at the world, 
that there really is an opportunity for people in high places to create policies that are anti-racist. There really is an opportunity for someone who is listening to this video right now to say, you know, I have felt this way about women. And maybe I felt this way about black people, or I felt this way about gay people, and maybe I felt this way about Latinx people. To understand that we have this ability to be racist at all times and to acknowledge that and say, maybe there can be change. It gives me a little bit of hope. When I think of how it was in 1963 and 1950, when we had to fight just to vote, and now I know that me and a whole bunch of people that look like me and live like me are going to be chomping at the bit to get at the, to the polls on the morning of November 3rd. I'm not even going to work that day. You know, when people are dedicated to voting, we have that power to vote. And when we make that decision to vote, whichever way it's going to be, the, 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 the power is in the ability to vote, not necessarily that you have to do one or the other. Hopefully, we can put people in position to really continue to make little bitty changes. I love President Obama, or maybe it was Dr. King. I want to be more specific about that. We talk about this pendulum. And what we saw was President Obama, and then we swung back the other way to where we are right now. Where do we swing the next time? Next time, next time. I believe there can be change. It's just, it's painful and hard, just like Dr. Kendi Like fighting about. cancer. Right. It's painful and it's hard, but that pain is necessary. Mm. And I'm just glad. I, I wanted to tell you that um, God is amazing the way that God works on each of us. When you go fervently in prayer and say, I am inconsolable, God. I'm through with all of these people. I'm through with this church. I'm through with everything. And God gives us a little bit of something that says, here, read something that maybe make you feel better about where you are and remind you that you're heading in the right direction mm -hmm. and feeding your soul instead of hate. You know, this is the thing that we talked about in that last video is that fighting against hate is a lot harder uh, than when you're fighting against a policy that's already passed. You're, you know, you're people are a little more open to hearing what you're saying as opposed to before policies. But when you have to fight, fight, fight against this constant current that's coming back at you, that's very difficult. But when you're fighting in a world where there are little bits of positivity and there are people who seem to really want to care and seem to want to be part of a change and not necessarily fight, it gives you hope. So I'd say, yes, I'm hopeful. Uh, as we wrap up these conversations, um, let's dare to believe that we can be part of creating meaningful change and that this 600 year plague of racism, um, maybe in the next 20, 50, 100 years, mm -hmm. we can get beyond it. Uh, and as he says, humanity can survive instead of going down because of, of this. Yeah. So let's wrap up these conversations. <laughs>